Hi, this is Alex Tardy, a warning coordination meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in San Diego. Here's a little weather briefing for you, with the main discussion being the June gloom or the lack of June gloom. The highlights we'll take a look at for this video briefing. We'll discuss the current conditions going on here Monday, June 10th, and the marine layer clouds. We'll talk a little bit about the June gloom, the history of the cloudiness on the coast of California. Then we'll look at the weather pattern for the rest of the week. And what we're looking at is basically near normal conditions. We will have some gusty southwest winds over the desert slopes and the ridges. And it will be hot for a couple days today and tomorrow in the desert regions. Would you believe there's a storm over Southern California right now? Well, it shows up very nice on our water vapor imagery. This is not necessarily seeing the clouds, but the water vapor content in the atmosphere. It shows the spin of a large upper level low pressure system that's sitting right over central California. And Southern California is feeling the southern portion of the storm. Another storm is in the Pacific Northwest coming down from British Columbia, and that'll impact our weather later this week. So clearly depicted on here, a large scale circulation, but it's in the upper levels of the atmosphere. What does it look like on the jet stream or the storm track? Well, low pressure aloft centered right over south central California. You can see the jet stream is well to the north, the white arrow. The dash line is the next weather disturbance that will take its place and slowly carve across the west close. Now these systems typically, and especially this time of the year, do not produce any precipitation in our area unless they happen to tap into a little bit of tropical moisture and we see some thunderstorms on the east and north side of these low pressure areas. Again, these low pressures are aloft in the upper levels of the atmosphere where the planes fly. What does it do for our weather down here on the beach and on the coast? Well, it effectively disrupts the marine layer in the clouds as shown here. You can see a sharp clearing along the coast where the air mass has been disturbed significantly and even early in the morning there's a lack of low clouds or stratus along all of San Diego coast and at least part of Orange County coast. You can see the stratus clouds in Orange County are also broken up as they show up in pieces. So an upper level storm system can be very effective this time of year in disrupting the marine layer. What does it look like when we launched a weather balloon this morning? Well, you can see on here the red line is temperature, green is dew point, so that's a measure of the moisture. The very shallow area at the bottom of the, this profile is the marine layer, and it's several thousand feet deep. Above this, you can see the stronger winds that were captured. Those winds are coming from the southwest, and those are associated with the storm system that we talked about in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Another parameter that we take a look at are sea surface temperatures. Just like we do with El Nino across the Central Pacific, this time we look along the coast. Now sea surface temperatures don't fluctuate like the temperatures do over land, and they don't fluctuate even much when storm systems move through. The heat capacity of the water can keep the temperature at a near constant level for a long period of time. So we look for changes here as they can be significant when they do occur. You can see in the southwest California area near the California Bight, water temperatures are actually a few degrees above normal this time of year. Those are temperatures as shown here running in the mid to upper 60s. Temperatures most recently reached into the lower 70s last week before we had a nice south swell that came up and mixed the water around and cooled it off. That was beach temperature, so that was shallow warm water but the water still remains a little bit above normal along the southwest California coast. You can see offshore there's a large area of slightly below normal in the blue shade. Now what is the marine layer and the clouds that are often associated with it? Well of course you can have a marine layer and be cloud free. Let's take a look at some of the basic scenarios. When we talk about a marine layer typically it's when it's impacting us with cloud cover here you see on the top strong high pressure aloft, often what we see between June and September. 
and it suppresses the marine layer, it keeps it down towards the coast, keeps the beaches cloudy at times, and especially brings the cooler temperatures to the coastal regions. While inland, all that hot air mixes right down across the higher terrain and the deserts and even the valleys at times with sizzling hot temperatures. Now we also can have weak high pressure aloft, like we've been seeing a lot in May and early June. This keeps the marine layer much deeper so it crawls up over the valleys and up into the foothills. The deserts are quite hot, or at least normal, but what it also does is allow the marine layer to mix out a little bit so you get some partial clearing in the afternoon hours of the day. Now the scenario at the bottom, that's what we've been looking at today, and we also saw early last week where low pressure, a low pressure system is sitting right over our region. That allows the air to effectively rise and lift, and this can completely mix out the marine layer. It also can spill in some slightly cooler air over our bigger mountains and into parts of the deserts. It results in a little bit nicer weather on the coast, a little bit warmer as well, and much more sunshine along the coast as the atmosphere mixes out nicely thanks to the low pressure. The air is allowed to rise and not be trapped below the marine inversion. So that's the scenario at the bottom that we're looking at today. Why do we call it June gloom, you might wonder? Well, along the southwest California coast, when we look at an average of cloud cover over the water and along the immediate coast, we can see that in June, typically that is the time of the year when conditions are most cloudy as shown here in the upper right. The red depicts the percentage of cloud cover and it's most widespread during the month of June. That's not to say that May and also July, they have their share of tremendous amount of cloud cover over the water and occasionally on the coast. When we get into August and September, we tend to see the atmosphere becoming so hot, water temperatures warmer, and we don't see the cloud cover as widespread, at least on an average year. Well, as we know with weather, most years are not average. Here's a depiction of the cloud cover. Frequency of low clouds along the entire California coast. You can take a look at this image here. Pick your favorite year, favorite month. This is an average along the entire coast, so it's not necessarily San Diego or Orange County coast. But it does show like a year 2010, which was known to be quite cloudy during the summer, started off pretty good in the May with month of May with little cloud cover. And then as we went wore off into the year, the summer months, it was cloudy many of the days, at least on the coast. Most recently, last year, you can also see the month of May started off pretty good as low pressure aloft kept this mixed out until we get later into the summer. Now, this doesn't mean that the coastal weather can't be nice during heat waves. It just means that cloud cover and marine layer are strong right over the water and likely up to the beaches. And finally, here's a look at the weather pattern for the rest of the week. Jet stream will carve across Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. It'll be north of our area for this scenario later this week. However, the Southwest flow aloft will dominate. This will keep a rather deep marine layer along the coast. We'll allow it to mix out at times as well. So we shouldn't be in the permanent June gloom, but it'll also bring temperatures that are quite seasonable and pleasant near normal conditions across the region. It'll also bring some gusty winds across the desert slopes as the cooler air along the coast tries to reach inland over the hot deserts. You can see the main area of high pressure and the main heat will be building well to our east across Texas and the lower plains. Here's some links to follow the weather if you'd like to take a look at real-time wind and weather forecasts and monitor the weather across Southern California. All the weather stations, almost a thousand of them in Southwest California can be found on the map shown here in the middle where it says monitor weather. And you can also look at graphical forecasts on a Google map and the link shown here where it's labeled as new. Thanks for tuning into this video weather briefing. We hope you found it useful.